So what better way to celebrate than to get out here in the bush and explore some of the Suitable. Well, Peter asked for a vehicle and well, here we go. <sighs> that was a bloody long day, but we got it. Make that two, please. Make that two, please. So Graham wants a car as well. I'll explain why I was in a dream slash nightmare. Still haven't made my mind yet as to which way around that is. Make that too. Hang on a minute. He was looking at a really nice bonnet in that video. Let's go. Wrong car. I need the ute. I need to use the ute. So here we go, out on another recovery mission, this time for Graham from XA Coupe Guy. And this is the vehicle that we have chosen. What we have behind me is a ZF Fairlane. Absolutely beautiful example of a bush wreck. And I think Graham's gonna be absolutely smitten with it. We already know he's got a few parts lying around his shed that will fit this particular model of Fairlane. So why not give the guy the rest of the car? So let's walk around this vehicle now and see what's good about it and what's maybe not so good about it. Let's get into it. And as per usual, let's start at the front of this vehicle. Now, first thing you'll notice is we have a complete grille and front assembly, which is really, really great because quite often this is all gone. And so it's nice to have it here on such a unique vehicle. So Chrome is in great condition. We still have a lumber plate down the bottom there as well. Unfortunately, the plastic, uh, these are made of plastic. So it's gone brittle in the sun and it has started to crack and warp, which is unfortunate. But anyway, let's move into the engine bay of which there is no engine left. Surprise, surprise, go figure, right? So anyway, this was a factory 302 with the uh, C4 column shift automatic, and we still have our tags, which is absolutely fantastic. And because we have our tags, we know that this car is a factory purple, which is really, really unusual for a Fairlane of this era. Most of the Fairlanes were beige, conservative, boring colors, but for some reason, when whoever optioned this brand new, gave it an absolutely beautiful, beautiful color, which, it's one of the reasons why we're saving because of the factory color in this car. So moving down in here, our front assembly and stub axle and everything is there. Um, we've even got a couple of wheel nuts, which is really unusual. Nice them to leave those behind. So that's gonna be easy to get that up out of the dirt, get the wheel on, job done. Put the color off, rotate it, excellent. That's just flapping in the breeze. Um, there's a bit of rust behind there, Graham. So watch out for that. Right, jump into the interior there. And what we have is a W2 interior, I think it is. It's a white uh, cloth clever mix, um, which is again, quite an unusual option. You can imagine with the white interior and the purple on the outside, this car would have looked absolutely boss back in the day. Uh, still got the carpet in there. Now I know with hard vinyl floors, the, uh, the moisture gets trapped under it and it rots the floor out something chronic, but carpets, I'm not so sure. So once we get this car up off the dirt, we'll have a look under there and see how bad the floors are. Right, now look at this back door. What's cool about this, this is another one of the unique features about this car and why we've chosen to rescue this one for Graham. It has a continental roof. Now these were dealer options, uh, dealer factory installed options, dealer options, I don't know, use your own words there, but they were installed by the dealer. Um, really unusual to find a vehicle that has this. Um, even trying to Google search a continental roof on a ZF Fairlane, you don't find many examples. So they have this one out here in the bush with all of its stainless and chrome in perfect reusable condition is absolutely amazing. Now you can see under the what's left of the vinyl, white vinyl roof, um, some of that original purple color, which has been sun baked unfortunately, but um, a few bullet holes for character. 
Um, probably will need a new door there because that's a bit how you go. Anyway, let's move around to the absolutely enormous rear end on these things. Massive trunk as the Yanks would say. And we've still got some indicators on the side. We're missing a few lights and center panel in there. It's, it's, it's a bit rusty what's going on here. The rear bump is good, but it's got a couple of cracks from the rust, unfortunately. So um, that will need to be replaced. Can we get in? No, that's, that's pretty well locked. So unfortunately, we won't be getting into the boot. All right, come around this side. Now, this is going to be one of the hard parts of rescuing this car. We look at the rear diff. We actually have a diff in here, which is nice, but you can see that the axles are missing. Also, what's missing are the studs that hold the axles in. So what we're going to have to do, um, a couple of meters over that way, there's another XC Falcon. Um, I've already got, I brought axles with us, but I didn't know the studs were missing. So we'll go see that XC and um, hopefully we can knock out some studs or even just find some bolts to use to bolt our axles in and get this car rolling. If we can get it rolling, it makes this job of rescuing it so much easier, especially today with these flies. They're absolutely loving us and we have already hit 30 degrees, so it's only going to get warmer. Jump inside, there's that beautiful continental roof again. I love it, it's gonna look so good once Graham finishes it. So you can see under the, uh, sorry, where the seat would be, the floor is in really good condition. There's not much rust going on. So I reckon it's gonna be the same under that carpet, but we won't know till we pull it up and have a look underneath. Um, console, it has one, but it's sun baked uh, for the last 20 plus years. So that's going to need to be replaced. Um, we can turn the ignition barrel, which is great, which means we can get around the steering lock. Yep, absolutely awesome. And there's enough frames, there's enough left of those seats to reuse it, get a reupholstered, depending on what Graham wants to do. Okay, and then last corner, we've got our full assembly in there as well. So again, a couple of wheel nuts, get it up out of the dirt, uh, pull the caliper off. I think, I'm gonna jinx myself now, but I think this recovery is going to go pretty easy. It's just that rear diff that's gonna give us grief, if anything. Now, one thing I've learned with recovering these cars is doing it by yourself is an absolute mission of a job. So I figured, why not bring a few friends back to the Outback? That's right, we're gonna say back, because today we've got down the shed with Byron with us. It's a bit early for lemon squash, isn't it? Ah, righty -o. okay. <laughs> Hopefully um, he will be of use. We'll see how we go. Anyway, let's get this hyperlapse going. Let's get this car out of the dirt. I'm excited to see what that floor looks like underneath. Let's get into it. So as you can see there, we have got the front of the car up onto some wheels. It's going great. Hey, Byron, how's it going? Good, good, good. Thank you very much for coming out and giving us a hand with this. Um, as you saw in the hyperlapse there, Byron just got stuck in. It's actually really great to have mates around who want to give our hand. Um, <laughs> dang, these flies are everywhere, man. We're eating them, we're snorting them and all sorts. Now, we had a bit of trouble with this wheel. Um, the 16-inch rim didn't want to clear the upper control arm there. So we just inverted it. You know, give it a tough kind of street look. I reckon it's looking pretty good as a Mexican hydraulic car, you know, bit of a jumping car going on here. Um, it is looking absolutely awesome. So as I said before though, our next problem is going to be the rear axles. Now, before I get into that, actually, I just remembered the calipers gave us a little bit of grief, but once we figured out which bolts to undo, those calipers came off very easy and they are now sitting in here somewhere, I think. Yep, down there. So calipers go with the car, which is great. So onto the red diff, as I said, we are missing the studs. Um, we've got two on this side, two's enough, that's all we need, but we need two for the other side. So we'll probably jack this up. No, actually no, we'll go hunting for parts first and then we'll jack this up and see what we can do. So over that away, let's go find this X, I'm sure it's an XC. Color. It's a what? It's the color. Oh yeah, and the door jams, the original color. Which looks really good. Those jams actually look pretty good too. What's the doors look like? Oh, there's a little bit of rust in the corner there. Look back here. Oh, oh dang. <laughs> what is going on there? I don't think that's bog. I think that's like plaster. Okay, you're gonna need new doors, Graham. 
<laughs> All right, let's go find some parts. Okay, so just to give you guys an idea of just like how lost and sporadically placed these cars are that I find, um, you're coming for a walk with me to find the location of this XC uh, Falcon. So Byron's following behind in his vehicle. I've got my GPS here, and which is my phone. I've got the location marked, but it's not 100%. So what we do is we literally just go for a walk out in this nothing, which is intense sunlight. Should be over that way somewhere. So I'm just referring to my set, my GPS here. Ah, oh, here we go, we just found a track. Got some track, I can see a rim and tire up there. So I'm just gonna be directions behind me to Byron to follow up in the vehicle. He's got all the tools with him. But when you're out in the scrub like this, sometimes it's just easier to get on your feet and go for a walk, as opposed to trying to bash around in a limited car all the time. Okay. Where are we? So, we've got a wheel. Ah, over here, here we go, over this way. So, I gotta pick a path too for Byron to get through. So, you know, there are tracks here, but they have not been used in a very, very long time. There it is. I can see it for the trees over there now. So GPS location was a little bit off, but close enough. And here we go. So I'm sure it's an XC. I can't quite remember. It's been a while since I've been to this car. Let's have a look and see what we have here. All right. Yes, it's a Falcon. It's a, oh, it's an XA. It's an XA. How cool. Right, but look at that. Look at him got a whole, like, oh. Did you guys see it? That's a blooming bunny. <laughs> awesome. Um, first time, actually the closest I've ever been to a rabbit out here in the bush. So we've got axle here, which is fantastic. It means that we're going to have the studs that we need. Oh, it's a complete diff. That's great. What else can we see around here? Uh, bench seat, column auto. Oh, we've still got tags too. Falcon, four door sedan. Yeah, XA. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, Rectangular engine mount, so this was a six cylinder. Good rear bumper on that, actually. Oh no, it's got a few bullet holes on the corner here. There goes a complete diff in there, Byron. Axle to axle. Excellent, all right, let's grab what uh, we needed and get out of here. This is my face of frustration. As you just saw, the studs came out very easily. So did the bloody axle. Never have I pulled an axle out of a bush wreck and it's just popped out. Every time I have to use a bloody car to yank the thing out. Let's just use these and see if our dodgy ones we found in the dirt. Arr! I'm like, I'm both, I'm both happy, ecstatic, and frustrated at the same time. You should have heard his laugh actually when we did this. <laughs> A maniacal laugh. And air shocks. I'm finding that really common actually. That a lot of these old cars are riding on air shocks. Um, there's at least three I can recall where they've um, yeah, had air shocks in the rear. And it's got leaf, um, extra leaf supporter on here as well. It's extra spring. I don't know, it's hot. Let's just go get this bloody <laughs> set there. So there we have it folks and Graham, your ZF Fairlane is back on wheels for the first time in a very long time. Once we get it home, and we've got to do it for the XA as well, we'll do that later on in this episode, we'll rummage through all the cabin and see if we can find clues as to how old these cars may be sitting in the dirt. So we know how old they are, we know what models they are, but how long have they been sitting in the dirt? And the way to find that out is with uh, coins and packaging and and anything we can find that's consumable inside the actual car. Anyway, just look at how awesome it is 
sitting up on those 16s. As I said before, the front wheel doesn't quite fit properly. It's the wrong offset, but the rears worked absolutely beautiful and they are a treat. Now, speaking about the rears and the axles, this is one of the things that can really stuff you up when you're trying to rescue cars out in the bush, is the tiny little manufacturing differences that they do during model to model and sometimes even within the same model range. So for example, this is a ZF Fairlane, which is based on the XB platform, I believe it is. Um, and it uses a different kind of rear wheel bearing to the XA ones that we pulled out just before. So the XAs have a solid unit, <clears throat> whereas the ZF uh, uses a separate race and bearing. And so these are absolutely useless. They are not going to work at all. Luckily, the first axles that I pulled, that I brought with us, uh, did work. And now we have, we have a bit of trouble. The rear diff has also been filled up with dirt, having no axles in there. When it's flooded, it's pushed a whole bunch of dirt and sand into the actual uh, crown and pinion. And so it is really stiff. We've been able to get the wheels to rotate, but we haven't got them rotating in the same direction yet because the pinion's not spinning. So we may end up just dragging it up onto the trailer, but needless to say, it will go onto that trailer. And we'll start doing that right now. This is absolutely awesome. Um, it's a hot day. What, we're working about mid 30s at the moment? Close to 40, wouldn't it? Uh, no, nah, it's not quite 40 yet. We're, we're getting close. If we muck around too much longer, it will be. So another hot day rescuing a vehicle, but well worth it, go home. Probably go jump in the pool, actually, once we get home. Anyway, I'm just rambling now while he sets up the ramps. I'll give him a hand and let's winch this sucker on. And just like that, that has got to be one of the best and easiest recoveries we have done. As you can see in the ground here, the rear wheel did lock up. Um, once the tires got to the ramps, this tire here tried to rotate forward, but then the one on the other side was just trying to rotate backwards anyway. So that pinion is full of gosh knows how much dirt and debris. Um, unfortunately, we ruined a few little geckos and rabbits' homes. They all came running out and they're a little bit annoyed with us, but they'll find something new anyway. Right, so here it is up on the trailer. We're just going around now collecting all the bits and pieces that are useful, that are worthwhile. Uh, Byron, what are you picking up there, mate? Uh, just grab a big shaft, mate. Yeah, that's a thick shaft. Look at the girth on that sucker. It looks like a... Big V8 one. That's a big V8 sucker, all right. So that will be the original shaft to go with this Fairlane. Um, strap it down, a couple of straps around the front, one around the back. And do we want the bonnet? Do we want to grab this bonnet? Let's have a look over here. So we got, this is the uh, factory bonnet. The original bonnet, sorry, not the factory bonnet. Um, she's pretty toasty. Anyone living under it? No? Okay. Let's have a look. Oh, is it hot? yes, it is very hot. Um, you know what? We might try to take that chrome strip off the front and leave the rest of it behind. So a couple of bolts there. We'll take that strip. That's still okay. The rest of it can stay in the tree in remembrance of this fair lane being in the bush. Um, I think we got everything, haven't we? That's it. That's it. That's the lot, right? Strap it down, let's get home, go get ourselves a feed, a drink, and um, then we'll start looking over these vehicles and see if we can find any little relics inside. See you soon. And well, there you go. Another Fairlane has been saved from the Australian Outback. Now, the whole reason we chose this ZF Fairlane was so that Graham could fit that nice bonnet right there. That's it. That's the whole reason we got this car. Yep. Anyway, this car is going to be pretty easy to get back into a rolling state. All it needs is a decent set of wheels um that he can have not my trailer room and not a reversed 16 inch on the front that's pretty dodgy to load onto a truck like that so that's going to be fairly simple and straightforward to get rolling as for peters it's going to be a little bit harder as we have to go out and find one of those steering arms but we definitely have plenty of falcons and fair lanes to choose from to get an arm that is going to work um, we might even just go back out to the xa that we took the um control lower controller upper control, control arms spring and everything out of and I just take the steering arm off of that car because as I say, it's an XA, we know it's gonna fit. Anyway, so that is gonna be in the next episode of Automotive Carnage. Um, until then, we'll see you later.